please welcome to the stage Senior Director, Life Sciences, Dassault System, Steve Levine. Okay. Thank you all for coming and welcome to the second half of Science Week. Uh, some of you have been here for a day and a half, got to hear some speakers, some incredible speakers talk about some of the world's greatest problems, societal problems, protecting the planet. We're now picking up with the lives of our, the humans on our planet. And we're gonna drill down and talk about uh, how we bring um, the next generation of healthcare to everyone and to the world. So first and foremost, I want to welcome you who are just coming here to Boston. I want to thank you all for taking the time. I know everyone's busy, and many of you uh, come from around the world to join us here in Boston. Uh, I know if you're in the room, you realize it doesn't look like this picture, uh, but that's what it looks like outside. So keep that in your mind. Uh, don't be too tempted to go out, but hopefully before uh, you'll have some time later, uh, in the week to be able to really explore Boston. For those of you who are out online, uh, I want to welcome you for joining us. Uh, hopefully, uh, you're able to appreciate some of the experience that we bring to you. Uh, I'm still, I'll be honest, adjusting to this hybrid model where uh, half the people are here. In fact, probably only a quarter of the people are here in person, uh, which is fantastic that we can be inclusive of all of you from around the world. Uh, but as you know, and those of you who are here and will tell, the, the actual experience of interacting with one another, the conversations, the networking, everything we do here is such a part of building the community that I hope by next year we flip it around and we can have 75% of the people here uh, working together. But I'm thrilled to see so many familiar faces um, that have been here. Uh, and you know the title, of uh, this ninth international symposium on the virtual human twin experience. It's a pretty long title. Uh, but actually, as you'll, as you'll see over the course of the next day and a half, every word of that title is very meaningful. Uh, and you'll appreciate it as it comes to it. Uh, and as you know, the purpose, the goal, the spirit of this entire week is to talk about science, but not science for the sake of uh, interesting technology, but how it metamorphizes, how it changes our world. Uh, and that's, of course, uh, key to the Living Heart Project and the Virtual Human Twin uh, initiative. In fact, it's more resonating with our message of, we can get this, click, is it working? Maybe, ah, technology. All experience is human. And so while we're saving the world, it's important to recognize that it's the world um, that we live in. Um, and we are focusing on uh, what happens inside uh, the people and the people around us. Um, and so this particular event goes back uh, and through the spirit of our company's belief uh, about the virtual world and how the virtual world uh, allows us to improve the real world. The virtual world is really uh, the extension of our imagination, uh, what we can imagine in our heads translated into a world that we can see and we can share, whether it's uh, down to the, the, the genes, the DNA inside our body, whether it's an entire model of the human heart, as you know, uh, or whether it's even a patient in a hospital and the breathing the air that we're around. And you're gonna hear speakers talk about virtualizing all throughout that scale uh, and making sure the human twin represents the experience of how that body um, reacts through all those environments. Now this is pretty special for me personally uh, because here in Boston is where this Living Heart Project, which is the predecessor to today's virtual human twin experience symposium began. Uh, we launched the project in 2014, although a year before I gave a preview, 10 years ago now, I gave a preview of this idea uh, that if we work together, 
uh, we're much stronger than if we work apart. That if all of the experts that are working, whether they're in a lab, uh, trying to understand how the cardiomyocytes are activated uh, by a particular uh, treatment, whether you're trying to design a new valve to help mitral valve regurgitation, or whether you're actually sitting in front of a patient trying to explain to them how you're going to help them live long enough to see their grandchildren. If we take all of those experiences and bring it together, that's what it takes to build an actual virtual twin. It has to be able to reproduce that entire life cycle. And if we could find a common language, then we could maybe do it. Uh, and that was really the inspiration behind the Living Heart Project, to see if we could use that as a showcase. Uh, and as many of you know, and many of you were actually uh, there 10 years ago, it's brilliant to see some of the faces uh, that have been here th and through the journey over the last 10 years. And you'll meet many of them uh, as we speak. Now, if we fast forward to where we are today, uh, we're not talking about an organ. We're talking about the inspiration that we've done for communities across the body, the brain, the lungs, the liver, uh, the muscular skeletal system, uh, we're able to understand now how to take all these pieces and bring it together. Uh, and as you'll hear uh, in a few moments, uh, this is no longer a dream. It's a commitment on behalf of our company to build uh, the virtual human twin experience. And so uh, this is really our uh, epicenter, this meeting. Once a year, we come together. Uh, we share our experiences. We share our knowledge. We share our challenges. Uh, our everyday life experience, and then we go back and we roll up our sleeves and we solve those challenges. And we're gonna keep doing that, hopefully, uh, until, uh, until we have it fully mapped out. So for those of you who have not been um, uh, following us over the long, uh, this last 10 years, this is a very quick overview of kind of the journey. Uh, the virtual human twin is not really a thing. It really is very much about the journey, that we understand the human experience and we change the human experience as it goes. So I think this will go on uh, probably as long as there are humans. The origins, of course, of the technology that we use in this space go back decades uh, to other industries. But the real change happened about 10 years ago when we as a company decided to transform ourselves from helping to build better products to helping to build a better world. Uh, and when we stepped back and we looked, well, how do we help to build a better world? We thought, well, let's start with the people who populate it. Uh, and that began with the Living Heart Project, the Living Cell Project. We thought, could we build these building blocks? And that's now evolved, as you can see, system by system. Uh, and you'll see pieces of that this year. You'll see what, plenty more of it over on our website and in the papers. There's now hundreds of papers out there coming uh, on these systems. Uh, and this journey uh, is all about the community that you guys have all built. Uh, you know, our role is to coordinate, to make sure you're enabled, you connect, and then watch the sparks fly. OK, so here's what you're going to hear for the next day and a half. Uh, this is a pretty high level view of it. We're going to start. Uh, as I said, with a bit of a vision, I'll invite our executives up to share our thoughts um, as your host for our vision for the virtual human twin. Uh, we'll then, as we have, have for pretty much uh, all nine of these symposia, uh, hear from the clinical world. Uh, we really want to keep the end in mind. We know that if we're developing better healthcare treatments, it's ultimately those clinicians on the front line who have to determine whether or not the tools we're providing them work, uh, the experiences that we're reproducing make sense, they're, they're realistic. So we get them right up front, uh, and we have an incredible lineup of clinicians this year who are going to share their experiences and hopes for the community. Uh, we're then going to transition uh, to industry and showing how the industry is now taking those clinical experiences previously only available uh, to those people in the hospital, in the lab to back into the laboratory so you can have a virtual human that's behaving the same way as a real human so they can actually develop more advanced uh, treatments with actual working on virtual patients. Uh, 
Uh, and then we'll take a look towards the workforce of the future uh, and enabling innovations and where some of our startups uh, are going. Uh, tonight, uh, hopefully you'll all be able to stay. We'll have a reception uh, right out in the playground. I'll give you the logistics about that later. And then we regroup tomorrow uh, with an even bigger uh, agenda. I think we have, as you can see, some of the statistics. We've packed in about 37 speakers over the next day and a half. So if you're online, make some coffee, because it's going to be a long day. Um, and we'll start off tomorrow. Um, we'll hear a little bit more about um, how the virtual twin fits into the overall picture uh, for life sciences, because we know that uh, it takes more than people to actually deliver good health care. You need systems, you need machines, uh, you need all of that. Um, and this, this piece that we're providing fits into a bigger picture. We'll, we'll start off with that visual. Uh, and then we'll talk a little bit about some really innovative uh, work being done on the brain. Uh, I think that is going, some of that is going to be a real surprise uh, to a number of you. Uh, and I think you'll really be impressed by that piece. And then we're going to do, again, a piece that's been a hallmark of this meeting is to bring in the most important step, which is that bottleneck uh, of the regulatory process. So we're going to uh, really focus, as we have every year, on how do we make sure all of these innovations don't die on the vine. How do we make sure that our regulatory agents who are responsible for the safety of their treatment out in the world have access not only to understanding the technology, but how to use it so that they can help make the regulatory process as efficient as the innovation process? Because if they become the bottleneck, it doesn't matter how much innovation we get. If they don't know how to use it or how to interpret it, uh, it'll never make it to the patients. And so we're going to have a, uh, as we all have, always have an uh, important session uh, with, uh, with the regulatory bodies, a uh, representative from the FDA will join as well. We're then going to shift to a very important topic. I know all of you um, have been following this, uh, if you follow anything in technology, and that's the evolution of artificial intelligence. Uh, this has been a segment of the symposium pretty much from the start, but in the early days, it might have shown up in one or two of the talks, and it's been progressively showing up in pieces, uh, so much so now that we'll have an entire session dedicated to the use of artificial intelligence to drive virtual twins, or virtual twins driving artificial intelligence, driving patient behavior. Uh, and so I think that's going to be a brilliant uh, session tomorrow afternoon. Uh, and then we'll, we'll do a bit of a look to the future, some of the new projects that we're working on, and you'll see those details as they unfold. So this is a little more detail uh, on uh, what you're going to see today. Uh, I won't go through these in um, great detail, each one I'll introduce. But just to give you a flavor, particularly if you're joining us online, uh, if you do have con uh, conflicting constraints, we'll do our best. I'll do my best to keep us on schedule. So if you need uh, to duck out for something, come back right on time, and we'll do our best to uh, be there for you. And so this will be the morning. We'll have a break, uh, and then we'll switch to the afternoon. So it'll be a, a full day. Uh, up until the end, and then we'll have a reception. I believe there'll be a group photograph, so I think it's going to be in this room. I'll give you an update later. So if we get to the end and you can't wait to get to a drink, you're still going to have to smile and come up here uh, and pretend you're enjoying yourself. Okay. Uh, as you probably know if you've been here before, we all like numbers. We're all analytical kind of people. I, the agenda is too packed, so I can't give you too many numbers, but I thought I would just share this with you. One of the things that I monitor to try to see kind of the maturity of the content, and what I've done is just simply looked at the, the speakers, the content that's on the agenda, uh, which is not engineered by us, it's engineered by you, based on where the innovation's happening, who's prepared to share uh, their innovation. And what we're seeing now, um, if you look at the evolution, uh, I tend to break it down into these four different groups. So when we started, it was very academic and research oriented. So it was 90 plus percent uh, academic and research oriented. We now shifted to the dominant um, content being used and coming from industry. Uh, we have almost 25%, 20, 
percent coming from the clinical world. Uh, that's a huge change. One could argue that if we hit equilibrium, these should all be in balance and we should have maybe a 25% of each. So if we can get uh, that shift from industry over to the regulatory side, then uh, we'll be able to get there. So this is a pretty good balance uh, and a good measure of where we're at. So just some logistics. We're here in this room now. Um, I think you've all uh, seen the breaks will be in the playground. If you go there, you'll see the experiences, virtual reality demos, some of the latest technology uh, that our brands have been showcasing. Um, it's a great place to learn and meet each other, meet some of the experts uh, in the technology who can really accelerate your work.